Let me tell you a story that almost no one saw coming. Three years ago, Micron Technology was just another cyclical memory company. The kind that booms for 18 months, then crashes for three years, leaving investors bruised and analysts exhausted. Everyone knew the script, everyone had lived it, but something broke the cycle. It wasn't a new factory or a clever acquisition. It was a quiet realization inside the hyperscalers that you can build all the GPUs on Earth, but without enough high bandwidth memory, those GPUs are kind of like Ferraris stuck in traffic. So memory stopped being a commodity. It became one of the biggest choke points of the entire AI revolution. And there are only three companies on the planet that can make the latest generation at scale. Micron is one of them. Think about what it really means when HBM is sold out for 2024 and essentially locked out for 2025. And Micron has already signed pricing deals for the most of its 2026 HBM 3E supply, with the rest expected to sell out pretty soon. Every HBM stack Micron can produce next year is basically a done deal, with pricing locked in with multi-year agreements. The customer is calling them, not the other way around. That is the pricing power most tech companies will never see in their lifetimes. This is no longer the old Micron that rose and fell with PC or phone cycles. Over half the revenue now comes from the data centers, and they have walked away from the low margin consumer products to feed the giant AI clusters instead. This company has quietly moved to the absolute center of the most important technological shift any of us will live through. Every Fortune 500 company is running its own models, every car processing, sensor data in real time, every robot, every scanner, every augmented reality headset needing 10 times the memory of today. We are still in the very first inning and Micron is becoming one of the primary infrastructure providers for this age. Let me connect the dots so you can see how rare this alignment is. In 2022 and 2023, memory prices collapsed. Micron lost money. The stock fell below 50 bucks. Then the world wrote them off again. But instead of slamming on the brakes, like past cycles, Micron cut the low margin stuff and doubled down on the leading edge DRAM and HBM including massive long-term fab projects in Idaho and in New York. They've been pouring billions into the most advanced DRAM fabs. They pushed HBM 3E into volume ahead of schedule. They prepared for a future no one else believed in. Then the future arrived. NVIDIA's Blackwell class chips pack up 192 to 288 gigabytes of HBM3. This is across eight ultra dense stacks, depending on which generation. That is a ridiculous amount of memory and someone has to build all of it. You got Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Meta, all unveiling monster training clusters. Demand didn't recover it just went vertical. And because all three memory oligarchs had been burned in 2018, nobody overbuilt this time. The result, arguably the tightest supply demand imbalance since the dot-com build out. Here's how I'm thinking about this. Every leading indicator is still accelerating. Nvidia's management just called Blackwell demand staggering and expects it to exceed supply into 2026. Microsoft raised CapEx again. Google is building clusters that demand HBM at a rate that looks like some country's annual demand. And Micron's management, historically the most conservative voices in semis, 
now speak with a certainty you never heard from them ever before. They're not hoping for an AI boom. They know that they are living in one. So now let's talk about December 17th earnings. The entire street will open the earnings release and immediately look at two numbers, non-GAAP gross margin and HBM revenue. Just some quick clarity so we're all on the same page. Non-GAAP gross margin is how much profit is left after making the product. That's before all the extra accounting stuff. It's a simple way to see how strong their pricing actually is. Now for HBM revenue. This is the money Micron makes from selling high bandwidth memory. Think the ultra fast high end memory chips that sit right next to Nvidia GPUs inside their biggest AI servers. These are the golden chips of the entire cycle. Wall Street is anchored around Micron's own guide of roughly 51.5 non-GAAP gross margin. HBM was already close to 2 billion last quarter. If they come in clearly above the margin guide and show HBM pushing into the low 3 billion range, that's a very loud statement that this AI super cycle is still in full force. Should you buy Micron before December 17th or wait it out? Wall Street already knows the story. The bar is not just beat. The bar is if they can beat earnings, raise outlook, and have a killer 2026 AI story. So a lot of it is more about the guidance rather than the earnings. Wall Street thinks that earnings will probably beat, but we need to see what the story is moving forwards. Anything short of that, and you can still get a classic sell the news drop even on good headlines. And I'm not saying that's what's gonna happen, and I'm gonna break it down for you in just a minute. So if you're a short-term trader, buying right now is a pure volatility bet. If it were me and I wanted to play earnings, I probably size it very small and define my risk and not be shocked by a double digit move in either direction. If you're a two to three year AI believer and I think the future is looking good, these business trends are strong enough that one single earnings day should not make or break your thesis. Scaling in over time, maybe even using any post earnings dip could play out in your favor. Now, the longer view most investors are still sleeping on is if Micron simply executes, no miracles, just ships everything it can make at steadily improving margins, it will generate more free cash flow in the next five years than in its entire 45 year history combined. And this is of course, if the trends in AI adoption will still continue. Now, US fabs start coming online from 2027 in Idaho with New York following around the end of the decade. You have the Chips Act, money flows, balance sheets becoming more bulletproof. If Micron can sustain 40% gross margins with multi-year HBM visibility, the math generally says 350 to $400 a share by 2027, 2028, pretty much on the table. That's not a guarantee. It's just how uh, I'm thinking about the upside if this AI cycle really plays out. Now let's get a little bit technical. Let's look at the charts so I can give you a technical analysis and my short-term price targets for the earnings. All right, guys, looking at the charts, this is about a one-year time frame we're looking at here. Um, before 2025 and into early 2025, we were trending in this channel. We came down and then we broke up and then straight slingshot to the upside. Really strong price action this year. And let me tell you, trading Micron this year has been amazing for me. Uh, I've been doing options and I've been hitting some really incredible numbers, uh, especially during this area here where it was a very much clean stair step pattern. So you could practically buy any of these dips off the 13 or the 21 EMA, but it didn't even come down to the 20, uh, 21 EMA. So on every rip, it was an easy sell. Once you break out through some kind of uh, resistance zone, you get a nice move. 
pullback, it starts to bounce, you get the breakout, your next play. So that is how I have been trading Micron this year. But now we are kind of like at a massive inflection point. We've had such a massive run up and now we've had that pullback down to the prices around $195, what we were uh, trading at in October, uh, the 22nd of October, 2025. Now we had a nice rebound in the markets right here and we're kind of holding up in this zone. Now, why does it look like you were holding up here? It's this yellow slanted trend line we have here. You got one point of, con uh, one, uh, point of contact here and then the second and then it pulled back down it bounced off of the 21 EMA, and then we're right back at the trend line. Now, when you are keep slamming into a trend line, eventually either it breaks or the whole move just runs out of steam and comes back down to the downside. Um, so depending on how earnings go, if it's a sell on the news, uh, I'm thinking we're probably gonna come back down to that 195. So what I've been seeing for the majority of this year is, you know, some uh, stocks, uh, you know, when they don't do good in earnings, they just come back down to that previous level of support. Uh, and, you know, we've been running quite a while. So, you know, and we've already tested this support. I don't think that if we have bad news, uh, it'll come back down here and break even lower. Uh, because we've had such a uh, strong correction uh, in markets the past couple weeks. And Micron, I think it held up pretty well compared to the rest. Yes, we had a really big drop. But uh, in comparison to how long we've been running here and holding up, it's actually looking like one of the strongest uh, plays on the market. Now, what if the guidance comes out really well and we beat earnings? My next target would be, the first one would be here at the highs at 260. Now, once we, uh, if we can clear the 260, the next one is at 275 and slightly longer term target or mid term target of around 307. Now, how did I come up with those price targets? Using just a bit of technical analysis here, there is something called uh, Fibonacci extensions. Now, when you do Fibonacci extensions, you begin at the very beginning of a move, drag it all the way up to the peak, and then you bring it back down to where the pullback was. And it can give you targets up here. There is a 618, which is a common target. 283, you could target that. I'm uh, targeting a little, I think I drew this line, maybe the line shifted. So when you look at the analyst targets on Wall Street, what are they saying? So here's one of them, which is Mizuho says, uh, tech, uh, Micron Technology price target raised to 270 from 265. Now, where did they get the 270? I'm sure they have their, you know, uh, calculations and find and you know, their financials and all that stuff. But for me, from somebody who's a, uh, you know, swing trader slash investor, 270, sits somewhere in this area here. Actually, 270s are right about here. So, you know, I think their target is conservative and uh, I th there may be some higher price targets. I haven't looked at all of them, but I think we could get up to 283. Now, how do I play this if I decide to get in and I'm not yet decided to get in? Uh, I may wait to see if we get a dip this week in the markets because it is a possibility we have uh the fed uh and then we have the bank of japan the following week so uh the market's a little bit shaky right now it is a possibility that sometime this week before earnings we get a uh, a little bit of a dip back below here maybe to the 50 this purple line and that could be a loading up opportunity if you want to play earnings if it comes down even lower before earnings back down here even better less risk but just quick disclaimer, the uh, playing earnings is always a risk. I don't really recommend it, especially with options. You get the IV crush and all that stuff. Guys, if this resonated, like and subscribe so you don't miss notifications for my next video when I break down the earnings. See you guys soon. Take care.